The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. He approached, grasped her hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her, and she waited on them. When it was evening after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak, because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him, and on finding him said, Everyone is looking for you. He told them, Let us go on to the neighbor, nearby villages, that I may preach there also. For this purpose have I come. So he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, the Lord Jesus Christ. Mark's Gospel has been called the Gospel of Miracles. And Jesus is in a hurry. And he's going around so busy, driving out demons, healing the sick, walking on the water, calming the storms, raising the dead, uh, giving sight to the blind, dry, uh, curing leprosy. You name it, he can do it. And every time he works a miracle, they always say, shh, don't tell anyone. It's called the messianic secret. And it's only when Jesus is on the cross is his true identity revealed. Truly, this is the Son of God. And that's the charisma, the basic love of God for all people. And Jesus Christ coming, proclaiming the love of God. And all the while, while he's busy, 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 he always takes time for prayer. And we see that here. And he cured his mother-in-law, our Simon's mother-in-law. That was very important. And of course, in order for Simon uh, to have a mother-in-law, it meant he had to be married. You know, so uh, I think people forget that. They think that the Catholic Church never had married priests or bishops. The longest part of our history, priests and bishops were married. They had the choice. Not anymore. <laughs> but we still have some. If you join, if you're Episcopal and you convert over or Lutheran or something, you can, you can bring your wife and kids with you. Church always has double standards, okay? <laughs> Let us pray.